We're back now, 839, with Oscar-nominated actor Jesse Eisenberg, who's reprising his role as J. Daniel Atlas in Now You See Me Too. Atlas and the Four Horsemen pulled off an incredible act in the first film, but now they're on the run again. The group is trapped in a villain's trick, and the only way to escape is to use some magic of their own. So I'm going to try to control something that's a lot easier than people. I'm going to try to control the weather. <laughs> yeah, wait. Um, <laughs> It'd be a little difficult to make it rain, right? That would be something that only God can do, right? Because I'm going to do something that God can't do. I'm not just going to make it clear up. No, 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 no. I'm going to make it actually stop. Jesse, good morning. <laughs> hi, nice hi. trick. Thank you very much. People loved the first movie. Yeah. When they came to you with a sequel, was your reaction, oh, sequel, or oh, sequel? Yeah, it was probably somewhere in between. It was like, <laughs> oh, sequel. But, um, <laughs> you know, because the concern was like the first one was so great and it seemed to work for like a number of reasons that we couldn't foresee or control. And then uh, we were all hesitant until we read the script that they finally got right and we thought this is fantastic and worthy of doing. And it seemed like the kind of movie that people wanted to see more of. Mm -hmm. It had like this incredible ensemble ensemble of wonderful actors, it had this really cool concept of magicians who can do these incredible things, and people were really, you know, kind of wanting another one. And, and for you, these films are a bit of a breath of fresh air because, <laughs> yeah. as you've said and admitted yourself, you're used to playing kind of unhappy people who make everybody <laughs> miserable. Yes, exactly. And that's not this case. Yes, no, no, no. I, I grew up playing that in my personal life, and now I play that for a living. I play, like, kind of miserable, self-loathing people, and now I get to play this guy who's, like, this incredible magician who also loves himself, and it's this very strange thing. Like, after the end of a long day playing this guy, I'm like, I kind of feel okay. I think I might sleep tonight for the first time in months. Is, is magic something you were into as a kid? I mean, did this come naturally to you? Yes, I, I loved magic as a kid, but I was always frustrated by it, because I didn't know how how anything was done. And what I love about this movie is actually we explain how we do things. So that trick with the rain is actually not only possible, but in the movie our characters explain to our audience like how it's actually done. And that trick with the rain, in my opinion, is the most beautiful trick in the movie, and yet it's incredibly easy to do. Wait, 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 wait. You can act, because I have a golf game on Sunday and it's supposed to rain. You can stop <laughs> the rain? Yes, although if you have a golf game, I could just tell you how to win. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, the, the rain is a, it's an incredible trick. All it requires is like, uh, it requires a rain machine, which obviously is something you're not taking into consideration, <laughs> and, um, and like a strobe light, and you can actually time a rain machine with the strobe light and make it appear as though it's stopping. It's incredible. And uh, I heard you and your castmates went to magic boot camp. Yes, <laughs> like, yes, is this yes. something we should try? I mean, Although boot camp makes it sound just more like, rigorous than yeah, it probably was. Just 20 chicks on yes, the floor right now. Exactly. Count cards. Um, yeah, no, we went, we tried to learn, except our characters would have been practicing since they're like eight years old, you know, in the mirror for 10 hours a day. So we, you know, hung out with some magicians for two weeks and we learned some tricks. And then I proceeded to tell everybody I know how everything is done and get, uh, you know, booted out from the boot camp. <laughs> Let me change uh, topics a second. You're in a play right now yeah. over in London. That's right. It's a play you did here in New York. York. So what is the biggest difference between a New York audience and a London audience? Uh, it's the strangest thing. The, I, I wrote the play. I'm a New Yorker. Uh, you know, we did the play in New York. Uh, and yet, for some reason, and it takes place in New York City. It's about New Yorkers. And for some reason, the London audiences seem to be kind of flocking to it with more excitement. I don't know what it is. <laughs> the audiences seem to be kind of more into it, more engaged. I don't know what it is. I suspect we have maybe some kind of a novelty thing there because we're <laughs> unusual being there, whereas here, maybe it's more typical. But it's just been uh, the most incredible experience. We have a show in a, about 24 hours. Good well, you. oh, so you're back to London. Yeah. So maybe the Brits are laughing at us. Yes, I think that's what it is. Yes, exactly. Is they're, mo they're mocking us. Yeah. And yes, exactly. Is there going to be a third installment in, in this movie franchise? I, listen, I hope for my own therapy's sake that there is. <laughs> it's like the healthiest thing that I do. Uh, I would love it. Um, this movie turned out even better than the first one. Uh, and so I think, you know, if that's our trajectory, then I hope there are several. All right. Maybe you'll be back for Now You See Me 3. <laughs> That'd be great. But in the meantime, Now You See Me 2 comes out this Friday, June 10th. Jesse, thank you so much. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.